What's up, folks? I'm on, by the way, and welcome back to the Gauntlet of Tobers, the, the Tober to End All Tobers, the Challenge Tober, whatever uh, I'm going to wind up calling it most consistently throughout this period of time. So, basically, what we are doing, if you have somehow missed the first episode, I'd recommend going back to check that. This is day four, uh, and we will be recording days four through six. I'm going through three days at a time through the selections and pulling up the Wheel of Tobers, a boop. We see this, um, the spinny wheel here uh, that I have created of a bunch of different links to different prompts. And the idea is that I'm going to be rolling, hi little love, going to be rolling these days. So list two four in this circumstance is going to be day four of that list. Day five is going to be list five's day five, so on and so forth. These all have obviously the 31 days of prompts for the month of October. So it's kind of a, it's a different kind of spin, literally and figuratively, on Inktober with just all of these different prompt lists that people uh, across the internet have come up with, mostly on Tumblr. Like, I think mainly completely just on Tumblr. <laughs> I found a, a, a list of links and I just kind of put a good portion of them on this wheel. So at that, let us just spin our wheel and get our day four, shall we? A boop. We will never get used to that. <laughs> maybe, maybe once this gets a little bit smaller, it'll be easier to look at. I apologize in advance. Okay. So we've got this link, and I will remove this from the wheel. And this is Prompt Tober 2024. And we are on day four. So that is going to be Autumn Carnival. All right, let me copy this link. Where is my schmagaggle? That should be interesting. I've been making creatures these past couple of days, so trying to figure out how to do with that will be interesting. All right, next selection. Make sure that this is still going. Okay, we're good. Next selection, day five. D day, yes. I misspelled this, day five. A boop. Boop. Boom. Red selection. What do we got? Open this. Remove. Spooktober art our prompts from Pot Potacor. All right, and we're looking for day five. Trick or treat. Sweet. These are a bit more esoteric, or not esoteric. I mean, kind of, but like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like vague, almost conceptual as opposed to like just actual terms. So that should be interesting. Next list. Final selection for this round, a boop. It's gonna go to the bloop. Yeah, ba -ba. we have a winner. All right, open this link in another tab, remove that from the wheel. This is a, oh, it's a written out one, isn't that cute? This one definitely seems a little bit more, uh, a little bit more like writey almost. I think that that's the idea. Some of these are yeah, October writing prompts. Some of these were listed in the list. They aren't explicitly art prompts, but I will be using them that way. See, 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 I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm sorry. <laughs> that that username. Uh, we are looking for day six. Also copy paste this. Day six. Sour lemon candies. Okay, so we have our days uh, selected for this round of three days, and I will let you know what I've done with these. These are definitely going to be a bit more interesting than last time because they aren't just like one word prompts. 
uh, and they have a little bit more of a, a possible like multi-meaning situation going on or just like their activities not necessarily something that like is just a just a just a noun <laughs> i guess some of them are verbs some of them are whole sentences so i'm curious as to how that will work but i'll see you there all right so starting off with day four autumn carnival since i've been making characters i kind of wanted to keep up with that despite these more vague prompts i figured it would make sense to either draw characters at the carnival or the performers and i wound up choosing the latter i thought it would be fun to take an approach towards some non-human clown creatures something a little un unsettling to encapsulate the vibe Sorry in advance if you have cholerophobia, but I find that making the clowns look less like just uncanny humans actually helps with that a little bit. It just makes them seem <laughs> like more deliberately scary or unsettling, which kind of counteracts the point a little bit. Here we have two performers, one more jester or harlequin-like and the other more like a modern circus clown. I spent way too long trying to hatch this piece to give it a bit more of a gritty look and I wound up not really liking it and scrapped that for my usual shading. It also took me a long time to make even as simple of a background as I did, especially because I decided to throw in a silhouetted ferris wheel at the last minute for some more visual interest to kind of show you where we are a bit better. Left to right, these are Fool and Folly. They're siblings who work for a mysterious carnival. It only appears for one evening, but it looks like it's been abandoned there for years. Rides still work, and the carnies are friendly, but there's something just off about them. They're not quite human. If you come across a carnival, stay a while. Be kind, and you'll be treated kindly in return. A lot of lost souls find their way here, especially closest to Halloween. Just be sure you don't stay too long, or you risk accidentally becoming a permanent staple of the carnival yourself. Day 5's prompt was trick or treat. Since Halloween is all about that kind of blurring between the supernatural and reality, I always love the idea of monsters getting their day to essentially dress up as themselves. I decided to draw a werewolf kid and a ghost kid sitting on the stoop of an abandoned house. There is something about a friendly ghost kid that really grabs my heart. Our ghost seems semi-Victorian almost, with some hair covering his face. The werewolf kid is pretty generic, but they're also dressed up as a werewolf, so <laughs> the ghost is also in a sheet too. Both have taken off their masks to be themselves together, and I will try not to cry so hard at that symbolism! They also have pillowcases full of candy because that is the ideal way to trick or treat, no questions, thank you very much. The ghost boy is Aster and the werewolf kid is Jamie. Aster lives at the abandoned house at the end of the road, the one he died at eons ago. He guards his former home, not knowing what his unfinished business is, but he offers a place to stay for his new friends, the monsters who come around the neighborhood for Halloween. He usually feels a little sad to see his peers grow up without him and eventually not come back the next Halloween, but the friends are worth it in his mind. Jamie is the first to offer help, a kind of crass werewolf child who isn't afraid to point out Aster's missing eye. Jamie swears they'll help Aster figure out what happened, after the two of them trick-or-treat, of course. The jury is still out on whether Aster can eat candy.
And finally, we have Day 6 Sour Lemon Candies. My first immediate idea for this was a character with a sour mood, but maybe on top of something sweet, something to sort of protect themselves. My first thought when a lemon candy comes to mind is lemon heads, of course, which also have a hard shell on the outside like a jawbreaker. A hard shell. A turtle. A turtle dragon? <laughs> and I finally landed on a, a less intensive piece than the previous two days, with only one character this time. A yellow turtle dragon guarding a pile of lemon candy like a hoard of gold. Despite the single character, this wasn't as fast as it probably could have been just due to the amount of time I spent drawing the pieces for the pile that he's on. I also tried covering him in like a little bit of sparkly white to look like that sour citric acid powder that's on some candy. I don't know if it totally turned out, but I like him regardless. This is Citron. He's a young turtle dragon who, despite his angry appearance, is actually quite anxious. He puts up a front to look intimidating, but once he's coked out of his shell, physically and metaphorically, he's actually quite sweet. He may even share some of his candy. No one really knows why he chose to hoard lemon candy specifically, whether he thought it was gold, or that it looked like him, or that he just likes the taste. Kids that hate lemon flavor often leave little offerings for his hoard after Halloween. And we are done with days four through six. I hope that you liked this episode. Leave a like if you did like it and let me know which, which day from this batch was your favorite. I think I like day five best, just a personal thing for me. The two characters are really cute. If you want to keep up with this series or other fun art challenges I do in the future, be sure to subscribe. At that though, I'll leave this here and I'll see y'all on Friday for days seven through nine.